Next theorem is extension theorem which states that any linearly independent set in a vector space can be extended to be a basis of that vector space. So let us suppose V over F is a n dimensional vector space and it has basis let us call it alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha n. And uh, let us assume S1 is a set which is linearly independent with elements W1, W2 up to Wp. Now, P has always be to be less than or equal to N as per replacement theorem. Any set with more than N, line N vectors would be linearly dependent. So, let this is a linearly independent set. So, if yeah. If in an n-dimensional vector space it is given that a uh, set is linearly independent, then that set has to be uh, have less than n elements, less than or equal to n elements. All right. So now what we will do, we will make a new set S2 by combining all the elements of set S1 and the bases n. Now, let us take some element from S1 from here. Then obviously that element would belong to V also because S1 is a subset of vector space. So that element would also be in vector space. And if it is in vector space, then it can be written as linear combination of elements of this basis B. So I can write this as summation let us say a i j's alpha i's i from 1 to n i have written this w j as linear combination of elements of this basis b let us call this as equation number one these a i j's are elements from field f now if you can observe can i write this as 0 times w1 0 times w2 and so on 0 times wj minus 1 0 times wj plus 1 and so on up to 0 times wp plus summation i from 1 to n a i j alpha i what i tried to do i tried to write this wj as linear combination of all these elements of elements of s2 accept that element wj so what does this mean this means some wj from s set s1 can be written as linear combination of elements of s2 it means s2 is a linearly dependent set what is the definition of linear dependence? Definition, uh, it says that if one of the elements of this set can be expressed as linear combination of other elements, then th this set would become linearly dependent. So S2 is a linearly dependent set. All right. Now uh, observe one more thing. Let us take some random element from vector space V. Now since this B is the basis, so this V can be written as linear combination of elements of this basis, say uh, not Aij's, we have already used, let, let us write Bij's, i from 1 to n and call this as equation number 2 or uh, again I will this, write this as 0 times Wj's, j from 1 to p plus i from 1 to n b i j alpha i o j's are zero elements only is that okay we can always do so uh, on the same lines we did here so what does this mean this means v is linear combination of elements of s2 these are, these are all our elements of s2 so v has been written as linear combination of elements of s2 it means v belongs to linear span of s2 so what does that mean that means v is con uh, contained in linear span of s2 and uh, linear span of s2 is already contained in v 
why because s2 is a subset of b and uh, it, since b is a vector space so closure property scalar multiplication all would hold so linear span of s2 would be contained in v so combining these two a and b we can say v is equal to linear span of s2 now observe that what we have concluded from a and b we concluded that s2 is a linearly dependent set why because one of the wj's has been written as linear combination of remaining elements and uh, the vector space can be spanned by s2 but uh, now observe this thing what about s1 s1 we have already assumed that it is linearly independent so this vector which has been written as linear combination of remaining vectors this cannot be one of wi's it has to be one of alpha i's let this vector is vk and vk can be written as linear combination of elements of s2 so i am writing says bj's beta j's wj's j from 1 to p and i from 1 to n i is not equal to k one of these were alpha i is no so this is not v k this is alpha k so alpha k has been written as linear combination of remaining elements this is uh, let me write uh, beta we have say gamma i alpha i for beta j's and gamma i's from field f so now what we will do uh, look what we are trying to do we made a set by combining a linearly independent set and bases but then we concluded that uh, this cannot be uh, this set is s2 is not linearly independent so what we did we wrote one of the elements of this set as linear combination of remaining elements and now we are going to drop this element from s2 and make a new set let us call it as s3 this will be w1 up to wp and uh, alpha 1s up to alpha k minus 1 alpha k plus 1 up to alpha n we had dropped uh, uh, out of this set alpha k now this set s3 uh, proceeding on same lines we can easily prove that uh, linear span uh, these proceeding similarly on this way we can easily prove that linear span of s3 is equal to v and uh, now again the thing comes if this set s3 if it is linearly independent then our uh, result is done uh, it spans the vector space and linearly independent then s3 will become a vector uh, sorry will become a basis of this vector space but if this s3 is linearly dependent then then we have to proceed similarly proceed similarly as above similarly what what we will do we will again uh, write take one of the element say uh, this was alpha k some another element say alpha k plus 1 and to remove it out of the basis then we will make set s4 which will be now having one less element than this s3 and uh, again we will check if it is linearly independent then it is okay if if it is linearly dependent then we will remove one more element and keep on doing like this until we obtain a linearly independent set which spans vector space that's it